All right, let's do a project together. So I've got this AMS unit which allows me to print with four colors on this printer. And I've got a second one which will allow for eight colors. And I want to mount this unit on top of this other one. So it'll be something like this and the top one will be suspended a bit higher up of course. And it does take more room when I open it up like so. So what I like to do is to be able to pull it forward and open it in front of the suspended one. It'll be suspended about this high and I'm thinking of adding some side legs. This way the bottom unit can slide in and out. And from the hardware store I got a round pipe and a square pipe in case I need them. Alright, so what I want to do now is measure the overall shape so that I can model it in CAD roughly. So I need the height of the base and then the radius of the lid and the width of everything, the depth and then this part here and whatever rounding there is, just to get a rough idea. And then for the bottom, let me take this tube out. And then for the bottom I'm gonna have two legs on the sides. They're gonna stick here like so and get locked in place so that they don't wiggle. And because of this mount I expect the sides to be slightly wobbly. Shouldn't be a big problem, but if there is I can add a crossbar here at the back to connect both legs and hopefully make them more rigid. And here on the sides is where the mounting point will be and I want it to be as tight as possible to prevent the wobble. So I will precisely measure all the dimensions and I find that rather than writing them down, it's easier to just take a photo with a phone. That way I know exactly what the, si what the dimension is for. So I'll be measuring these slits and the space in between the slits. And how many they are. And the width here. And now with the right side up, you see there's also a height difference in between the side and the bottom plate. So I need to measure that as well. And I'll also be taking some general pictures as a reference for later. I could also take photos from the side and the bottom and import them in CAD later for reference, but they will suffer from perspective distortion, so I won't be able to use them for any accurate measurements. I just checked the other box, which is loaded with filament, and the center of gravity is about here somewhere, which means my leg should span probably symmetrically from here. So it will span about this area, and I notice there's a tiny thing here that I need to measure as well. So I got a bunch of measurements and now it's time to go and model the design. Alright, so I've got all the photos on the computer. There's a bunch of them. Alright, let's go to Fusion. I'm not gonna explain in detail how Fusion works, but you should get the main idea anyways. And this is the paid version, but the free version would work just the same. This is not a tutorial, it's just to showcase my workflow and hopefully you can get some inspiration from it. I'll leave in all the iterations and mistakes. We got a space mouse, which makes things move smoothly on the screen. It's pretty cool, so I'm gonna use it. General structure, we're gonna have the AMS unit as a component. Another component for the stand. And this might be a bit of overkill, but I normally have a subcomponent for the printed parts and another one for the source parts. Source parts could be the pipe and maybe some screws if we choose to use them. I'm gonna use the stand component for most sketches and planes. I'm gonna start with the top view and I'll do a rough sketch for the box. And I'll add dimensions but no parameters for now. I keep checking dimensions on this other window on the other screen. So I'm gonna anchor it on the side and not in the middle. Might be a bit of overkill for this project but if I want to later say change the width of the box then I don't want the legs to move relative to this origin because if they later get shifted some sketch elements might flip and cause trouble. So not really a must for this project but I'm gonna do it anyways. So coincident, I'll try to aim for the center of gravity which is perhaps this divided by 2 minus 15. I've got an outer edge here and a rounded corner. So let's round the corners first. I'm gonna say it's about 20, doesn't matter much. And now for this outer edge I'm gonna use a parameter, which is here, just getting fancy. So parameters are under modify, change parameters, I added a shortcut. I'm gonna make a new one called outer edge 173. But we're gonna need some clearance for the print and I wanna include that clearance into this outer edge dimension so it's easier to model. 
So for now, I'm just going to add a generic clearance and say 0 0.3, for example, could be a good start. And I'll add it to the outer edge. So it's plus clearance. There we go. So now it's bigger. Now there's this bridge here, uh, which they're not all the same size, but this is the thickest. So 1.1. I don't know the name for that. Maybe edge connector 1.1 plus clearance. And I also need the spacing uh, between them. 43, 11, 42, 42, 8, 43. How do we call this connector spacing? 43 uh, plus 1 for the edge connector. 1.1, 1 .1, something like that. I'm not terribly worried about these precise dimensions because we're gonna do a test fit later anyways. So offset the edge by outer edge. I've got six connector lines here. So I'm gonna find the middle of the line and draw a line here. This is a construction line and then add the connector. So the connector has the size of edge connector I was wrong here, so connector spacing should be just the spacing in between them. And now here, that's half that spacing. So it's the spacing divided by two. So now I know this is positioned correctly. Now I need six of these. So I'll do a pattern, uh, six. Now this box, it's silly because it's small and you can't make it larger. But if you click OK and then open it back again, so this is the icon. Now it's large and you close it and you open it and now it's small and now it's large again because this is fusion. So the direction is good. Um, I want spacing and I know the spacing is connector spacing plus the connector plus the edge connector and I don't want it in one direction, I want it symmetric. So when it's symmetric, it does this. I guess it's a bit hard to see but they're spaced out correctly, uh, but we've got four at the top and two at the bottom. So I got that wrong, so I'll do negative distance. And now magically, I've got them correctly in place. This is still not fixed. Here's the dimension, 11.8, 11.8, connector length, 11.8, I'm going to make it smaller so it fits minus clearance so now this is connector length now, i don't know these other sizes but it's not so important so i'll just add the same value of connector length one other way to use that is to click this other value that i already set so they're connected together and i might as well mirror everything to the other side so I'll do a middle line here for reference and this line and this line should be symmetric to this one. There you go. And I also want these two lines to be mirrored on the other side. So I'm going to mirror over this line and there you go. And now I need the pattern on that other side as well. So edit the pattern, add two more objects and here we go. Now the spacing at the bottom is clearly smaller and I should also round these corners a bit. So this is the back, I'll do half of that, whatever that would be. And some rounding on the corners, fillet. Maybe five, can change it later. And now time to extrude the MS unit. So base of the box is about 100 20, so extrude 120, now the outer edge, so this one starts higher up, here we go, it's about 11.5, so instead of starting from the profile plane, we're going to offset, uh, actually, at the parameter, outer edge, just call it outer edge offset, and that's 11.5, so then extrude, offset, outer edge offset, and we don't know the distance, but we know it's 
to the same height. So now I've got two bodies and we're gonna connect them with this line thingies. So I need to select them. Now ah, I've got a problem here because this rounding is not closed. Mm, I need to select all of them. You know what? Change of plans. Let's edit this sketch. Oh, I don't like this pattern anymore. I'm gonna turn it into just one element and delete it. There we go. No more pattern. Now I only have these two connectors to select. This one and this other one. I'm gonna extrude them to the top and is joining all the bodies. And now pattern this last feature of this axis. So it's six of them and symmetric and connector spacing plus connector thickness plus edge connector. Okay. No. So spacing, connector spacing plus edge connector. Kind of a bad name. Uh, but I didn't really fix it. All right, you know what? I don't care about this much. Let's just do here three. That should be small enough. There we go. And now I want to close it at the top. So these two pieces will be extruded from the top this time. So from here downwards, uh, say, I don't know, 20. Uh, but I don't want it to cut, I want it to join. There you go. Alright, so now this needs to be cut diagonally here. And it just so happens that these two sides are the same length. So I could use a chamfer. But if we later realize that we need to change the dimensions, the chamfer won't work anymore. So the more robust approach is to add another sketch. Maybe there. And I could project some faces, but I prefer to project things from the sketch. So project this line, and then I know the height, which is outer edge offset, and close this triangle. Also project this point so I can mirror over a vertical line, and this triangle gets mirrored to the other side and with these two triangles and extrude symmetrically all the way and that's gonna do a cut so finally we've got the bottom section and i want to have the top so i'll do a side view here project these lines because we might need them i guess here it's easier to project the top line and we'll do an arc Check dimensions. Looks like it's exactly half a circle. So 105. I'm gonna need this point and this dimension here, which is 53. Now uh, something's wrong. So this is 26. All right, turns out this is not half a circle. It's more like this, and I have another dimension here, which is 17. And the height of this is 105. I think something's wrong, so I'm gonna go double check the measurements. All right, so we've got the wrong dimension. This should be 283, and now it pretty much checks out. And so I'll close this dome now to be able to extrude it. And that's all the way to the other side and I need to join it. But it doesn't start quite from here. I don't know exactly from where. So I'm gonna just eyeball it, let's say from there. Or maybe from here, yeah. And also not up all the way, but five millimeters early. There we go. This is not very important. And we've got the MS unit. 
Could use a different material, clear acrylic. It's a bit too clear. Maybe make it less clear, a bit darker. Oh, it looks kind of weird. I just leave it opaque and maybe darker. There we go. Looks pretty good. I'll just quickly double check a dimension here. So here we are a bit off by about two or three millimeters. I'm not sure why. I'll just leave it as is for now. The word of circles that I might want to add. Now, do I want to add these circles? I'll just add them. Connector circle. That's 4.8 plus clearance. Now, where do I draw it? I will start a new sketch and project this, these four surfaces. So I'll add one of the circles. It's gonna be right in the middle. And I don't know this gap here, maybe 1.2. Looks about right. And I need four of them. I'm gonna borrow these two middle lines, project them over. Mirror horizontally and then mirror vertically. These can be construction lines and I've got the circles. So I'll extrude these ones from here to up there and we're joining and you know what I think it's easier to just have a plane here for mirroring vertical so instead of adding the other circles I'll just mirror this feature so mirror feature over this plane and it didn't work maybe say Identical work now. Woohoo! So so far we've got the MS unit. Basically, we didn't build anything that we wanted to build yet. Save it, and it's now time to build the actual leg. And we need to know how tall it is. So stand height. Well, it's not a stand height. I'll just call it stand height, and that will be. 230 at least. Let's do a depth as well. Maybe 200. And to visualize it easier, I'm gonna do another box. So we'll pattern this one down like so. Only need two of the stand height. Here we go. So this is how they're gonna sit on top of each other. Maybe there should be a little bit more room. Let's do it to 40. There we go. And I want to do a front profile for the leg. Let's see what I can project. This line looks good. And then I will intersect this line as well. Intersect just for reference. So here's the general shape. I want it to be like so, very roughly. Something like that. So there should be some clearance here, perhaps. Perhaps 10 millimeters, 15. There should be 45 degrees. I do like the 45 degrees and 90 degree angles. 
this is the stand height I don't know how wide this should be maybe 10 looks a bit skinny 12 I think I'm gonna chamfer this here and trim the excess again 45 I'll have just a small lip here I think this should be about this tall maybe 20 ah, but on the inside it could be taller on the inside to have more rigidity maybe okay so I'm adding perhaps 20 more something like this overall size it's a bit large might fit diagonally on the bed hmm, I don't like this shape so I would like this section from here to here to be thicker I'll do another line and have it further down Five, mm, slightly better. Make this only ten. Actually, I don't know that we need this top part yet. So, anyways, this is a printed part. I'm gonna extrude this by stand depth. Symmetrical. Here we go. So this is one. I want it to look more skinny here so I'll have only seven five and now I need this taller it might be slightly better and now of course there are no cutouts here so let's do those combine combine the stand with the box I cannot combine it with the box all right and fusion went nuts it won't let me select this box although i can select the bottom box because fusion is fusion and it doesn't know that this body is this body so this is one of those fun fusion glitches so this body is lost you can't even remove it because it doesn't know it exists although i can turn it off so backup plan we're gonna pattern this box back up by stand height I only need two here we go and so now I should be able to combine the stand with the box cut the box from the stand um, but keep the box so now we've got this here which should perfectly fit and it's missing some of the top because here I was supposed to select this one as well there we go and I'm thinking this should be printed sideways like so maybe like so and I don't want no support so I'm gonna have to chop them pa, 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 pa. and with this shape it's not gonna be easy to make the right cut out so I'm gonna do a trick here and expand this shape First I need a sketch, but I don't want to add the sketch directly to this surface because if we somehow go back in time and replace that surface with a different one the sketch will get lost, or the sketch plane rather So I'm gonna make a new plane here and add a sketch to the plane That way if the body disappears and we bring it back we just reposition the, the sketch plane so I'll project this sketch, which could as well get lost. And so I'm gonna offset this by say 50. And I want this line to be collinear with this other one. And so now I can select both of these and extrude them upwards with minus 45 degree taper. There we go. And subtract from that 
Tadam. All right, so now this is 45 degrees, can be printed. I did not want this to happen, so I'll just delete this. And now let's see if I can pattern this. So this feature and delete vertically and one, two, three, four, five times. And connector spacing plus connector, edge connector. Let's see if this works. It did work. Pretty cool. So now this is printable without supports. And it still fits here or should fit. And to make this look more fun, I'm gonna mirror it. Just the body. So this is left and the other one is right. Maybe change the colors. All right, slightly different. And so now we should be able to slide this out and open it and then put it back in. Let's see how heavy this would be. If it was ABS, would be 748 grams. If it was completely full, so the print would be perhaps one third of that. And at the back, I was going to add a rod here to connect the two together. I'm not sure that's needed, but I'm gonna add it anyways. And later on, I'll see whether I want to keep the rod or not. All right, so before the mirror, new sketch, project these two faces. And so the rod will go here I need a radius, rod diameter, so my rod is 10 millimeter, might add the clearance, all right, position it like 10 millimeters from the back, maybe just seven from the back, making sure it doesn't collide with the other box, so perhaps 40 here. And I want a thick circle around 35. There we go. Now, if I make a hole here, let's go all the way. If I make a hole like so, because we're printing like this, it's not going to be perfectly round. It's going to be slightly squished. I'm not terribly worried about that, but if I were to fix it, I'll do another circle. Same size, perhaps 0.25 or whatever the layer height would be. And I would extrude both of them. So it's now slightly taller on the vertical. And before that, I want to reimburse this whole area. So from here, I'm extruding this um, join and taper minus 45 because I want it to be printable from the side. So now this is slightly better. I want to delete this extra material, chamfer a bit. And this is where the rod would go. We could close up the opening here if we wanted to. So this hole, instead of going all the way, goes to this object, uh, but stops, say, 1.2 millimeters before that. There. Now we could also add the rod That would go on the sourced parts. So I'll just go and extrude this from here to the other side. 
there's a rod perhaps make it slightly shorter so it fits so offset one millimeter here and one millimeter on the other side all right here we go a rod now, and it's a different color or material perhaps aluminium or aluminum there you go so this cone should help it be more rigid all right this can be much bigger so let's make it bigger 20 i'll just go 15. something broke i just want to go this way there you go fixed and now i'm thinking i could fix this rod in place with a grab screw here or from the other side i'm guessing there will be a little bit of play here and i could add a grab screw here tiny hole and a tiny screw that squeezes in between the print and the rod and i could add that right now hmm all right let's add it i'm gonna put it down here and for an m3 screw tight fit would be 2.9 millimeters and it has to overlap a bit with the rod space to bite into the rod so our tangent say 0.4 might be too much we'll see and so now i'll drill a hole that way i don't know how long 15 should be enough but when we print it this won't be printable so i should move this at the bottom or at the top so let's move it maybe chamfer this a bit also makes it easier to print Ta -da! and of course the mirror is applied afterwards so the other side also has the feature and before the mirror I'll move the chamfer after and apply it here as well how about we also draw the grab screw so for that I'll go to insert McMaster car component search for grab screw metric m3 length say 10 and a black one this one and just the step file not buying it and here it is it lands as a component and is made out of two parts wow i don't know why but fine that's the grab screw apparently it's not black so i'll align align it here or here align it here but so i have to capture position i don't like capturing position um, so instead of aligning we're gonna join it so joining this to the middle of the hole there but flipped and further this way something like that there you go Ta -da! let's add some texture some gray iron and now i also want the grab screw on the other side so let's mirror that where's the plane here got the grab screw and the rod now checking it again i don't really like this part could i delete it yeah okay so moving back after that i'll just delete it 
and I could probably chamfer the whole thing a little bit so I'll chamfer this whole face, this whole face 0.5 and, and the bottom and maybe this face is and this face is And you can see the corner here, it's a triangle, but we can change it to blend and it's less sharp. Maybe also add this edge, yeah. And this is the whole thing. I suppose we could have some cutouts in here if we wanted to. I think I'll just leave it like so to have it more rigid. What helps with rigidity here more than the infill percentage is how wide it is. So I could revisit this here and make it say 15 millimeters. And I think this is also about 15. Yeah, almost the same. So to me this looks slightly better. And so we need a test fit for this. There's no point in printing the whole thing. It's mainly this part and this part here with the rod. I could either print only this corner or print this top section down to here. So something else I like to do at the end of the timeline is to add some settings for easy printing. One step is to remove everything that is not printed, so the MS unit, remove, the source parts, remove, and then align the printed parts so that they are in print position, which means align bodies. Uh, this face would be down, where's my origin? It would be down, flip so it's down, and same with this other one, be down here, flip. Right, so now they're both in print position. No, they're not. And also this one down and flip. So now they're both in print position. And now for test purposes, let me project this face. I only want to print this area here. So extrude both sides like so and intersect. And one of them is enough. So I'll print this, see how it goes. And to print it, I need to export it. Save as mesh. And I'll pick a file, left test fit. Gonna lower the info a bit because it's a test part anyways. So now we're at 91 grams and let's print it. And one cool thing about the timeline is that I can go back to where everything is assembled. And I could even group this section and call it something like print ready. So now we're in print ready and before. Save it and let's wait for the print. And by the way, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so more people see it. Here's the printed part. I have some old leftover PLA, so it doesn't look very good, but it's great for the test.
fits perfectly and I was hoping that it wouldn't fit actually and that I would have to make some adjustments but in this case there is nothing to adjust. If it wouldn't fit then I would have to increase the clearance and if it were too loose I would have to decrease it. Now this is quite snug, there is no way I can move it and I now realize that this bottom surface is actually slightly curved especially toward the front. I think most of it is fine just here at the front that is a bit of a gap not really a concern. Now this came out extremely rigid I'm considering thinning these walls to make it slimmer and save some material. It mounts so stiffly that I wonder if there's any value in keeping the rod but I'll keep it for now. One thing I noticed is the rod has a little bit of play so the hole came out pretty much as large as designed this obviously depends on the printer. I'll have to tighten the clearance on it. Let's test the grab screw. I think it's a bit too tight. Oh, it cracked. Got a crack here, so it's obviously too tight. And there's still play up and down. The better approach here would be to have a clamping mechanism. So there would be a cutout here and then a screw tightening that way. But I'm gonna keep the idea of the grab screw. Now here the grab screw pushed against the layers and it cracked the part between the layers. So I'll move it here where that problem goes away. It will also reduce the play that way. Grab screw is a bit hard to screw in from this side. So an alternative would be to insert it through the other side. But I don't want to have a hole here. So I'll keep it here. For the final material I'm going with this Fiberlogy Vertigo Grey. Uh, which is PTG. It's got little sprinkles and it matches the box. PTG is less stiff but also less brittle. The fit might be a bit different from the PLA. So I want to update the design and reprint only this small section to test fit the top part and the rod. Alright, so we're back in Fusion. I'm gonna change this first. So the rod diameter is too large. So we have it here parameterized with a clearance but we're gonna need a different clearance. So rod clearance, I'm gonna do a 0.1 rod clearance and the other clearance let's call it MS clearance. So now the radius is smaller and the grab screw which is here is biting too much into the rod and now that the rod cutout is even smaller it's gonna bite even more. So let's take this down to perhaps 0.2. Oh, I see the problem here. So this is the rod cutout, but I was measuring from the wrong place. So it was actually much deeper into the rod. So I'll take it back to say 0.3. I'm gonna move it down, vertically aligned. And now we're gonna have a problem here because it gets printed like this. So I'm gonna have cut out here so we don't have a bad overhang. Horizontal reference and then we'll do say 35 degrees. 30 and now some features broke. I need to get back and fix them. It lost the chamfer edge. Extend the hole. Maybe make it deeper also. Now I don't know what this other chamfer is. Ah, yeah, it was probably this one. Right, so now it'll get printed like so and it should be good enough to be printed. Problem with the grab screw alignment. I need to reposition it. And now it looks good. And now I said I wanted this part to be thinner. Looking for the sketch, there it is. So instead of 15, I'll make it perhaps 12. And this to be thinner as well. I don't need this anymore. And this dimension is driven. I want it driving. And I want it to be the same as that. Now we're missing a segment here, close it, there we go, now it's selectable. 
thinking to also reduce this to 12 so it's less of a gap here all right it's updated got a small issue somewhere all right so all of this got moved a little bit to the left and now the cutout is wrong so I need to extrude both ways all good and this is pretty much what I wanted to change I'm gonna save it um, <laughs> I would still like to do a couple changes here so for one I don't really like this edge it's a matter of preference but I would prefer that it was rounded and I will have to do this before the chamfer so before the chamfer perhaps something like this so now this rounding goes with this rounding and this rounding perhaps and the other thing I'd like to change is this flat surface I like to have an alternative design and I'm thinking since the MS unit is all about multicolor I could have here on the side a few wiggly bits of filament embedded here I don't know if everyone would want that so we're gonna keep both options again in the stand component I'm gonna add a plane and on the plane add a sketch because I don't want to have the sketch directly on the surface project this outer edge and this other edge hide everything and so I would like here to have a wavy line of filament so I like to have something like this perhaps yeah, it could be something like this and now I need a cutout for this piece of filament so we'll do plane along the path this path right at the beginning add a sketch there I project the tip of the line just to make sure it's in the, the right place and so now this is the surface of the print align it there this would be the filament 175 very tiny and I need clearance for this one as well filament clearance let's do point 0.2 I guess I can have filament cutout diameter which is 175 plus filament clearance so this is now filament cutout diameter vertically aligned here and we're gonna have a circle here tangent to both vertical line and mirror the circle and the distance between the circles should be much less than the filament diameter so filament cutout diameter which includes the clearance minus 0.5 minus 0.6 let's say maybe 65 we'll try this and this circle should be no smaller than the extrusion diameter so say 0.45 and now the fun part we are sweeping oh we're on the wrong side mm -hmm. so this would be the cutout and it turns out I drew it on the wrong side so I guess easiest now is to just mirror all these three things there you go and now the fun part we are sweeping this over the line doing a cut and so the filament would go in here now if we wanted to preview the actual filament I'm gonna add here filament diameter 175 and now this is filament diameter plus filament clearance change some things so here it's filament diameter minus 0.5 filament diameter minus 0.6 minus 0.4 and we're gonna have here filament diameter 
which is the actual filament inside. And that would be a sourced part. I'll do it before the cutout. So again, we're doing a sweep. Ah, wrong side again. Mirror the circle. Sweep. Over this line. And this is the filament. But I don't want it to run outside the print. So we'll just intersect them. Filament wire. Intersect it with this body and keep that body. So now I've got a piece of filament, give it some color. And now we've got something and we want more of this, of course. So more cutouts, pattern vertically, perhaps 10 of them, 20, perhaps 20 is too many, maybe 10. Mm. Can I also include the filament bit? No. And I need another pattern for the filament wire. Now if I wanted to change the number of wires, I'd have to change both of these patterns or add a parameter, say filament count. And this is not millimeters, this has no unit. Uh, let's say 12. And I would set here filament count. So now it's 12 of those. And here filament count and there's 12 of those. And these filaments, of course, could have different colors. Yeah, there you go, very colorful. And get them to the other side. I might not want it all the way to the front. So maybe the front should be clean. Again, a matter of preference. Go back to this sketch. Draw a rectangle here and leave perhaps 1.5 millimeters. So then here I want to lose this tip. Cut it. And now for the cutout it's a bit more difficult because we're cutting too much. So instead of cutting we're gonna have a new body, intersect it with this, so this would be the cutout, and trim the cutout, and then remove it from the leg. So now I've got this cutout that ends here, and it should be perpendicular to the direction, here is not, and I could fix that. Let's see. So instead of this vertical line, and this is somewhat perpendicular, 1.5 should be fine. And it kind of figured it out. Perhaps less cut out. Now, me from the future knows that there's a simple way to do this, but I'll show you later. So I need to change the pattern to include all the new steps. All right, so this is our alternative. You cannot see them from the front, but you can see them from the side. I'll let you choose which one's better. I'm gonna keep mine like so. So this is the final result. The lines could also be straight if that's what you would want. So if I wanted them straight, I would have to either straighten this line or create a new one. Now, one problem is that this element here that you, is used for the cut will not follow the line. So let's fix that quickly. Add a new point at the middle, intersect it there. One millimeter here, make this perpendicular. Four millimeters. I pretty much need to define everything. And we don't have a tangent yet, so it can do this. 
we need a tangent to the line this line will be tangent no, I cannot have it tangent best I can do is connect it here and how that is close enough some more adjustments now suppose we also wanted the plane surface here without all these wiggly things I could save the file and then save it under a different name and remove those but if I wanted to have them all in the same project then I could scroll back right before we started all the wiggly things and make a clone of this object so I could have a new component printed parts plane and this other one would be printed parts decorated and I'll grab this left and paste it in here so now this is left decorated and this is left plane and the decorated one will receive all the decorations and, uh, but we can't see the filament because it's hidden under this now if I hide the decorated ones and show the plain ones, I can see them here. The wires are still visible underneath, so I can turn those off. We still want to mirror this one on the other side. So mirror over there. And this is now right plain. And this is right decorated. And the last step for print ready, which is getting confused now. So it's getting confused first because it lost the reference surfaces um, for the decorated objects, but it does figure them out by itself. So just open and OK and it works. I need to do the same thing for the plane parts. So align this surface here, flip, and align this surface here, flip. And so now if I want to export this as mesh, I would say one file per body and I would get four bodies. And the four bodies would be these two that are decorated and these two that are plain. So I have all of them available. Now for my next print test, I only want the decorated ones and I only want to do a fit test. So I just want to print this section here. Should be enough for the filament fit test and for the rod and for this test up here. So I'm going to test the right side this time. And then I'll suppress this. And now we've got the full bodies. And to export all the bodies, save as mesh and one file per body and save them here. Back to this section, I have a simpler way to do this. Just delete this whole thing, move the end here, about 1.5 millimeters. And now the wire terminates exactly where I want it to be. Now I have to simplify back the timeline, remove all this stuff. This is now a cut and there's no more combining here. Fix the pattern. Ah, looks like my pattern got confused. I'm gonna delete it and redo it. And it looks like my fusion got confused. It doesn't know where the filament wire is anymore. And <laughs> there's a one here. I'll try restarting it. It did not fix it. Although I can see it here when it's created. All right, I'll just do it again. Sweep. Um, fix that. Also fix the pattern. And now I lost the colors. And fix the mirror. And that's it. And I'll share the Fusion file on Patreon for those interested, so you can further customize it. And here goes the new print. Let's try out the new decorations. It does fit. Oh, we need to tighten it here on the outside. 
this filament is a bit harder to push in and again same problem and finally I can install it here to make sure it fits it's a different length but looks great I'll test the rod fits almost perfectly there's no play I could go perhaps even tighter but I'll just leave it like that I'll check the grab screw I've got a really long one and we're great there's no way I could pull this out I could probably use a much smaller one and you can see here how it bit into the rod pretty happy with this and the last issue there's a hole here all the way through I don't want that there because it's ugly so let's get back to fusion first of all I've got a small fix to do so if we look at the printed parts plane there's a cutout here that I did by mistake I need to find it and remove it because this was only for the decorated parts looks like it's coming from this sweep and that's because it's cutting both the decorated and the plain plate only on the decorated right so now that's fixed and for the decorations I want to make this channel wider on the inside and narrower at the front so the filament doesn't escape for the channel we've got a parameter filament clearance bump it to 0.3 and I don't have a parameter for the entrance so I have to edit the sketch here I'll make it smaller down to 1.2 millimeters and the last thing I wanted to change is this hole I don't want it to go all the way through in the timeline this delete face is, is highlighted so I'll roll to there and before the delete we had this without the hole and the delete creates the hole so I'll edit it and maybe add this there you go perfect I'm quite happy with the design we've got one with these decorations as well as a plain one we've got a lot of parameters of course we could add even more and so let's test a few things suppose we wanted more filaments on the sides like 15 now we've got 15 here but on the other side we're missing three of them and that's because we are cloning these ones to the other side this is just an aesthetic problem because we don't print these wires and we could fix this by first mirroring the first wire and then pattern all of them and this is the mirror feature I'll move it back all right I can't I can move it where I want it to move it so I'll just delete it and recreate it before the pattern so mirror over here and now I've got the first one and the pattern should apply to both of them and now of course the colors are messed up I would have to recolor them but I'll skip it for now let's try changing another parameter let's change the stand height perhaps we wanted it to be taller say 280 millimeters now there's more room in between the boxes one thing to keep in mind is that this still needs to fit on the print pad at least diagonally so let's measure we've got 316 millimeters and so this would still fit diagonally on the print pad another problem is that now this pattern doesn't go all the way down and I like to parameterize this as well I'll go back to the sketch and in this case the easiest way to go is to move this line up and make it be the first one and that's because the stand will extend down and not up so this will always be positioned in the right place and now I need the pattern to go on the negative direction but I want it to extend further so perhaps this much but I don't want this to be a fixed value I want it to be based on the total height which is now 280 and so this is 70 less than the total height so stand height plus 70 and now same for this pattern I need to be negative stand height plus 70 um, but I would like to have a little more room here at the bottom and so I change the value and to make it easier I'll just add another parameter called decoration span which is stand height minus 80 so update the pattern this will be negative decoration span and same for the other one 
So now I can tune it further, maybe 75. Yeah, that looks better to me. And now let's get the stand height back to what I wanted it to be, 240. So now for this height, I think the decorations are a bit too crowded, so I'll go back to 12. And that's it, I'm happy with this. But there is one more thing, and that's when someone else is about to print this, they might have a different printer which has different tolerances, so they could use the test part that I've been using, which is this one. So I'll adjust it a bit. And I want this part to stay here in addition to all the other parts. But I don't want the actual part to be modified. So I will copy paste it. I'm pasting it directly under stand. And this is test fit part. And that's the one I want to cut. So I'm not cutting the actual part, I want to cut the test fit part. And now here it is, just that one. And we're pretty much done. Save. And let's export the mesh. One file per body. I like the high refinement, so it's more smooth. And this will create the five files I need. And back in the slicer, these parts won't fit. I need to rotate them 45 degrees. And to make it easier for the user, I'm going to have them pre-rotated in CAD. And so here I'll take all the bodies and move, rotate around origin. Forty-five degrees. And there's a version number here which will show up in the file names. Like so. So I get different files for different versions. And now when I import them in the slicer, they are pre-rotated. I still have to arrange them. And it picked kind of a weird position. Maybe drag them a bit that way. And this is taking 515 grams of material and 15 hours. I'm gonna change the infill to cubic, which I believe is more suited for this model and perhaps just 10%. So I believe cubic infill is stronger in this case, I might be wrong. Now on some printers you might still be able to see the shape of the infill from the outside. It doesn't happen in my case, but if that happens for you, you might want to change to a different kind of infill. I decided to add a kilometer brim. I'll just reduce the gap to zero to make sure it's connected to the part. It will be harder to remove, but we're avoiding some warping. And I'm pretty happy with it, so I'll send it to the printer. And we've got the prints. Now I don't know if this line is visible. The printer ran out of filament and it stayed like that overnight. So there's a bit of a line here for the filament change. But you can barely see it from a distance. Let's try mounting it. Looking good. It is quite sturdy but there is a little bit of give. I mean it's quite usable but let's see if this rod improves it. So I already cut it to length. I think it's slightly better. I'll add the grub screws. It's not very easy, but it does work. All right, I think this is even better. I mean, the leg itself has a bit of flex and it could help to thicken it back or add more infill. But that now becomes a bit of a preference because this is way stronger than I need it to be already. One thing to note is this spot, which is visible in some lighting conditions. The rod is behind it and this is a thin wall, so we kind of see it a little bit in this light. For the decorations, I've got two filament samples here. Let's try this one. Works nicely. And the green one. And 
am quite happy with it. And finally, let's test the fit. And one thing I'm noticing already is that it's not extremely easy to pull it. I mean, it's not hard, but it's not very smooth. And it's great that I left all the spools here, otherwise I wouldn't have noticed it for this test. So I could probably add some wheels here, some bearings inside the print. But I'm thinking to do something simpler. I'll try these sticky pads and see if they're good enough. So the box feet are a bit grippy and I'm hoping by placing this here it's gonna help with sliding. So let's see. Wow! Already much much better. I'm pretty happy with this solution. So I can open the top box and access it. I could not slide it forward due to the rod at the back, but that was not a use case. And now the bottom box. Well, this is not ideal. I mean, it does work, but I would have to slide it forward a lot in order to fully open the lid. And I believe this is kind of a problem. It's a mistake that I did when designing it. I should have animated the lid and that way I would have known that there's a problem here. In this case raising the top box would not help much unless I would be able to raise it quite a lot. I mean I would have to raise this up to here for this lid to easily open and in that case I wouldn't have to slide this forward and the problem is that such a large leg up to here would not fit on the printer anymore. So now this layout would still fit on the depth of my desk, so it would work. I would need one hand to keep the lid open while I insert the spool with the other hand. Um, but if my table was shorter, say from here up to here, then I would have to hold this with one hand, keep the lid open with the second hand and insert the spool with the third hand, which is not ideal. I suppose this could slide out on a drawer system, so there would be two rails on the side, but I don't want to get into that complication. And so I'll leave it like this for now. I'll install it in the final location and use them for a few days and see if I'm happy with it or if I have new ideas how to change it. Another small point is that there's a bit of play here. I did want to have some wiggle room, but it might be a bit too large so I could narrow it. And playing with it here, I just noticed a problem that I did not account for. I don't know how noticeable it is, but these two units are actually different designs. I can tell because these lines here are uniformly spaced out, whereas these ones are all different. Notice here there's a small gap, whereas here is a big gap. And our leg fits exactly in between the gaps. That means that this leg is compatible with this version, but not with this other one. And this is a problem that can happen a lot with third party components. They are functionally identical, but the design is different enough that our mod would not work anymore. So something to keep in mind is that this always adds more complexity, especially over time. A third variation of this could as well come out. So if I were to build this for me alone, then I'm pretty happy with what I have. But my brother, for example, only has this version. And because I want this to be available to more people, I'll have to make it work with this one as well. So I'll be measuring all these spaces here and try to come up with a solution. Ideally it would be one leg that fits both of them at the same time, but if that wouldn't work then I would have to have different designs. Now, the problem with different designs is that people need to figure out which one they need and might end up printing the wrong one. So it's better to have fewer rather than more. Fewer is also easier to manage. Alright, so we're in between the printers. I guess my decorations won't be seen much because they are all the way to the back. And luckily my table is very deep, so I can easily open this up and access the spools. I suppose I could even go this far forward. There's a little bit of risk of this tipping, but not much. And so I can operate it with just one hand. And I'm pretty happy with this because this is a standard desk, at least in my country. Now suppose this was a shallower desk or closet and there wasn't much room at the back. I'll still be able to perhaps hold this with my hand. This could also work if the desk was deep enough for this positioning. Overall I'm quite happy with my solution. And now that I think of it more, I think actually 
it will be more like so. And here at the back I have room for one more dry box for printing with this other printer when both of these units are linked to one printer. And then instead of pulling this forward I can just push this one back. And now I'm ready to print something with eight colors. Alright, so we're back in Fusion and the main thing I want to handle are these teeth which won't align with the other box design. And I made some measurements here, so we've got four different gaps with different sizes and I'm hoping to be able to overlap them with this existing teeth. And I think the best place to start is to add some parameters here so that we don't lose the measurements. Call them MS gap 1 which is at the back and I will include the edge connector. MS gap 2 48.6 plus edge connector. Gap 3 46 plus edge connector. And gap 4 48.4 plus edge connector. Now this edge connector also includes the clearance so these values will be a bit too large so maybe do a minus clearance for all of them and the order here is with gap 1 at the back. So first let's overlap the new pattern and see how much it differs from the existing one. I'll project these two lines four gaps and this is gap one gap two gap three and gap four and I could align them in various ways but it looks like if I align it at the back then they're not terribly different from what we already have so it looks like a good start. I will have to reference this surface and so I'll project this edge and now the spacing here is half an edge connector and so one way to do it would be to extrude edges so normally we extrude faces or profiles but we can do a thin extrude and then select these edges and we want to extrude from this object here up to the top which is not working and this can happen I'm not sure why let's try something else maybe go from the top to the bottom nah this is silly all right it might want it to be horizontal so how about from here up to here no well this is silly all right how about we eyeball an offset this looks good Alright, so this is not really what we want, um, but it gives us an idea of where the slits would go. And I kind of have two solutions for this. One is to take this negative space and shift it around to make new cutouts. And the other one is to shift these surfaces. Now I'm not sure which one is best here. And it looks like our cutouts are too thin. Yeah, so this should be edge connector and it should be centered so now it's more accurate I'm kind of tempted to reposition these surfaces by eyeballing the position but you know what we'll just do it the proper way even though it's a bit harder so first of all I want the cutout of this section to be a body so I'll start a new sketch and I'll project these two parts and then extrude them all the way to the top and it'll be a new body now this is not very useful, but if we do a cut and keep the tools, now I've got a cutout pattern, call it cutout. And I want to start at the back, so I'll position it or align it, just the body, with this surf. Uh, I don't have a good point to align it to here at the back, because it would get shifted. Now uh, maybe it works. So align it like that and then align these surfaces, there we go. Alright, so this is as if there was another tooth here and this would be the cutout for it. And now we're moving back by negative gap 1. And if we move forward to these cutouts, you see how it now aligns. And so now if we cut this shape, then we're left with this tiny tooth. So now this will fit both designs, but just for the second to last slit. Now we need to move this again, negative gap 2. 
do another cut, move again, negative gap 3, another cut, move again, negative gap 4, and do one last cut, and this time we don't need the tool anymore. Alright, so this was before, and this is after. We had four cutouts, and now we've overlapped the other four cutouts. Now, you could argue that this could be deleted, and same for this one, and same for this one, and we could simply select and delete them. But one thing to notice is that, for example, here, we don't have such a small edge, although there would be one for different gap sizes. So if, say, a gap size changes by, say, 10, then it would shift things. And one effect is that we've got here a small tooth that did not exist before. Here's the before and here's the after. And the other problem is that we've completely removed the tooth here with this delete, which was here. So to have a more robust design, we would remove this cutout, which works here, but also works for the actual values. But if I want to have it look better, then I would choose to delete this small teeth, have a design less robust, but looking better. And I think I'll go for the better looks. But just to be a bit safer, I'll do extrudes from here to here, cut, and from here to here, and from here to here. So now, if I had different sizes here, like say plus 10, then I would not get missing cutouts the way I did with the delete. And this feature would turn yellow because it cannot do the operation it was supposed to. So I would know what exactly I would have to edit to fix it. Now, let me revert to the good sizes. I'm quite happy with this. I don't need these cutouts anymore. They were just for testing. So now we've got a small problem with the chamfers. I'm guessing this edge changed. And so I would have to fix this no matter what. Rest is looking good. Let's just double check this dimension. 33.5 is just a bit smaller than our gap, which means it's gonna fit perfectly. Let's check all the other steps. It's all looking good. Save it. Couple small changes I wanted to do is to make this wider. Sketch 5. So here at the bottom, I'll do it 15 millimeters instead of 12 to make it a little bit more sturdy. Also, I want this gap here to be slightly smaller, just to be 12, maybe make it 6. We've got no errors, but if we look here closely, you know how this is 15 millimeters, and this should also be 15, but it's slightly smaller because of how the fillet works. And it's not really a big deal, but this is visible if you really look for it, and I find it annoying. So what I'd like to do here is to embed the actual fillet. I could have a fillet here, and another one here. I don't want sizes. And I'll need them to be concentric. And now that they're concentric, I know that there's a constant thickness here. I'll toggle this driven. This way I can try different values. I'm thinking it should go very close to the top. Maybe one millimeter away. Some weird shape remains here. I could remove it, but I'll leave it here for now. All right, so now I've got a few errors. And the error comes actually from the first extrude. Because of this gap, I need to add it. Now there's a problem with this catch. It lost something. So let's see what it lost. It lost a face. Now I don't think I have that face anymore, so we'll just delete this. And now we lost the positioning here. So I'll just project this edge, and we'll add a dimension to the edge, which fixes it back. Now there's a fillet here. Now I believe this became smaller due to the repositioning, and there isn't much room here, so I don't think I'm gonna enlarge it. Now because everything's shorter, this cutout is going past the end of the hole, so I'll just make it go to the back of the hole. And I don't believe we need this fillet anymore. Now this rod is a bit broken. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, we're extruding the wrong shape now. And I've got the right shape here. It should be this one. And it should start from the back of the hole. Oh. 
offset one millimeter and now it's looking great we've got a simple surface and we've got the decorations there's a good clearance here at the top and there's a little bit of clearance at the bottom let's check the print position oh looks like some things are flipped let's see the first one's wrong second one's good third one's flipped and the last one is also flipped there we go now it's fixed so it looks great let's save it and now i'll export everything again one file per body and go to the printer one thing i'm noticing now is that this test fit part is becoming useless let's see what broke i've got just a floating rectangle here which will keep going out of position depending on other changes that we make so i'll project this line and this line and also this channel so i'll do one millimeter here one millimeter here maybe 10 millimeter here and a couple millimeter here so we're gonna have this section of the model there you go and so now with this we can test the rod fit we can test this back teeth and these two holes for holding filament and save and now in the slicer i'm still using cubic infill and i bumped the infill to 12 percent i'm not using the strength profile because that uses six wall loops and that would increase the weight a lot i'm now sitting at 507 grams of material you could increase the infill density or the wall loops so three wall loops and 15 percent infill and now we're looking at 665 grams and for me this is not worth it so i'll go back to my previous settings this is still 10 and a half hours so let's maybe switch to 0.28 millimeter layers transfer and because my filament is very shiny and i can see all the vibrations i'll take down the outer wall acceleration to perhaps 3000 an hour down to nine hours and 500 grams but that was actually a pla profile so with the generic PETG, we're looking at almost 14 hours and a little bit less material and this is mainly due to the max volumetric speed for this profile and it looks like most of the print would go at about 90 millimeters a second so it looks like this will be printing overnight i'm just curious if the 0.2 millimeter layers would see any big difference in time and this takes us to 15 hours and somewhat higher speed so i'll stay with the 0.28 just because i want to see how that looks now i could probably increase this volumetric speed but i don't want to risk it because i might get a different surface finish so 14 hours it is and see you tomorrow all right we've got the new legs thicker some weather cutouts were needed thicker than the previous version let's see if they fit on this model and it fits perfectly now this is still more wobbly than the other one because it's missing the rod that that one has let me make another rod Ta -da, 404 millimeters let's mount it I need to install the box before I tighten the screws because this rod is slightly shorter than needed so I need the right distance uh, the tool is getting stuck here I could have made the hole at a slight angle and that way it would be much easier to screw this in and take the tool out now if I'm to compare the two, to be honest there's very little difference, mostly my table moving around and one issue is that this rod is quite thin, like I can bend it with my hand, so a thicker one could have been better. But on the other side this is rigid enough that even without the rod I'm happy with it. Now let's see if the old box still fits on the new design. Yep, yeah, fits perfectly. There's no movement at all. Let's put it back. There's also no movement with this one at all. So this will be the final design, at least for this version. The thing with this kind of projects is that you have to decide how far you want to go, because 
you can go forever. On the other hand, if I had to do this in a rush, I could have done it in half the time or perhaps quarter of the time, maybe even less, by forgetting all the nice features. If I had some other priorities, I wouldn't care much about how it looks, just that it works and then you would have been something very basic. So there's no right answer, it depends on what you want to achieve. Now, I tend to overcomplicate my projects and let me show you some reasons why. I value learning the most and in my projects I always try to learn something new or try out something that I haven't tried before. Even though it takes longer, I do learn from that and I can use it later. So for example these slits are completely unnecessary but I wanted to try them out and see how they work. This rod at the back here, again, completely unnecessary. I just wanted to see if it would work and how much better the build is with it compared to without it. And so in this case there is some difference, but not significant. I usually have a clamping mechanism here, but I wanted to see if it would work with just the grub screw, and it does work for me. We also tried different thicknesses. I was expecting it to have a much bigger impact, but well, there isn't much play anyways, so it's very hard to see any difference anyways. Now, my initial plan was to use way less filament and perhaps use the rod to have two legs here and two legs on the other side and maybe connect them somehow in a square. And that could have probably worked, save some material. But for this one, if I wanted to save some more filament, I would most likely do some cutouts here. I mean, get rid of the pattern and do some cutouts. If I had to do a cutout here, say a rectangle, then the problem would be that here there would be a bridge because this is the bottom of the print and that bridge here would look ugly. And one way to improve that would be to chamfer it so make it like an octagon and then the bridging distance instead of being this much would be that much. Or there could be two cutouts, one at the bottom and one at the top. So these are things that could work to save material. And having the layers going vertically like this helps a lot because there's very little chance that the part would break along the layer lines. It usually breaks in between the layers but there's no force on that direction to break it. So now I'll be stacking these two units, one underneath the other and I'm getting two more so there will be four of them, two and another two. Unfortunately this design will not allow to stack more than two uh, units one on top of the other. And the main issue is that you'd have to pull out the middle one to open it while the third one would stay at the back and we don't have a solution to that. I hope this was helpful, this is definitely not a beginner project but it's still on the smaller side, at least for me. This is more of a test video for me to see if there's any interest in this kind of format. If you want longer, more complex projects or simpler ones that you can maybe do in an hour or so. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'll share this Fusion Design file on Patreon if you're interested in that and want to play with it. And there we also have a discussion channel on Fusion. Best of luck with your designs and stay awesome!